Rock and Pop Stories. Bob Dylan, Maggie's Farm, 1965. Surely one of the most important songs of the great Bob's long career, the whole album is crucial as Dylan moves from folk star to rock star, and that's not going to be easy. For the moment, his audience is made up of folk purists, for whom a good song can only be conceived with an acoustic guitar, a harmonica, and, for the more daring, drums. Dylan himself had met the Beatles, with whom he spent several evenings on their first American tour. The Liverpool Four were profoundly influenced by Dylan, but the reverse was also true. What's more, Dylan had been blown away by the Bird's version of his song, Mr. Tambourine Man, so he was determined to put some electricity into his folk. For the first time on January 13, 65, in Studio A of the Columbia Recording Studio in New York, he found himself in the company of a real rock band with two electric guitarists, himself holding a Fender Stratocaster in place of his acoustic. Most of the songs had been written a year earlier, while the artist was resting in Woodstock, in the countryside north of New York. On the first day of the sessions, Bob was nervous. In fact, on January 13th, he only rehearsed the songs with the band, and none of the recordings made on that first day would be kept for the final album. Doubtless, in the opinion of those present, Dylan wanted to test the differences the band made to his new songs, composed acoustically. Maggie's Farm was inspired by the 1929 song Down on Penny's Farm. Starting from the theme of this song, the hard work of farm workers exploited by big farmers, Dylan turns it into a more general and virulent critique of society, of the exploitation of man by man. A rock critic referred to this song as the war cry of the counterculture. On the third day in the studio, January 15th, Maggie's farm was recorded in a single take, but the event, or rather, the scandal, took place six months later, on July 25th at the Newport Folk Festival. Dylan took to the stage, accompanied by a rock band featuring the legendary Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper. When the first electric chord sounded, the audience erupted in booze, and Dylan sang for 16 minutes, completely covering his rendition of Maggie's farm. To the audience's credit, those who witnessed the event are unanimous in saying that the sound was abysmal. The festival staff, having no idea how to adjust the sound of a rock band, all this didn't stop Dylan from carving out his own path. Folk or rock, he's the boss, and his destiny is one of rock and roll's greatest stories. Mm -hmm. 